you're watching and listening to Breakfast with Angela and Martin. Let's take a look at a few of today's front pages. Now, the Times leads with the new chief of the Metropolitan Police, who says that it should be easier to sack serving officials. I'm staying with the World Cup, and the Daily Mail says ordinary fans are furious to be banned from drinking beer at matches, while VIPs and corporate hospitality still can. And the Daily Express says turkey prices are increasing as they cost more to rise, to raise. Great, so it's time now to dive yeah. inside the papers. Joining us is Olympic legend Chris Akabuzi <laughs> and a former, well, a good colleague of mine doing the papers, <laughs> normally, Steph Tetchy. So, starting with you, Chris, yes. um, some good news for mortgage yeah. owners. Mortgage rates could slide below 5% in yeah. the high paper. This is really good news because after the mini budget and the market reaction to the mini, mini budget, mortgages were projected to go up above 7%, mm. uh, which would have been quite eye-watering for people who've been used to like 1%, 2% mortgages. Um, and what this paper is suggesting is that already some of the lenders like Virgin Money and HBC have knocked down the prices to below 5%. Platform is the best at the moment at 4.84% if you've got an LTV of 40%. So that's really, really good. But they're also advising, hold on. Mm. Hold on to yours because actually it could continue mm. to go down, which I feel is a bit of good news. And, you know, the role of the Bank of England when they started selling gilts really frightened the markets and every, we all paid the price for that. Um, but it appears, you know, whether you like it or not, that the autumn statement, the markets have reacted positively to it. Yeah. And I actually think that's the challenge we've got, that actually the autumn statement was actually a statement for the markets and not for the people. You know, um, yeah. but the reaction is the mortgages are happy, they're lowering their rates, so there is light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. hopefully. There, there was a lot of panic, wasn't there, after um, we had the, um, the, the Liz Trust. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Trustonomics, yeah. yeah. Trustonomics, certainly. Stephanie, Queen's staff facing job yeah, losses. Yeah, so it's not only Twitter that's going through a bit of a reshuffle. It's also happening at Windsor Castle, um, as to be expected. Loads of the Queen's beloved staff still work there, but it just seems, according to the um, Express, that, you know, for the future, it's not really going to be a castle where the King Charles and Camilla will be spending a lot of time. Um, King Charles has already sacked um, 100 staff at Clarence House, and there's set to be more cuts at Windsor Castle because there's roles such as lady in waiting which Camilla says doesn't really tickle her fancy and I think for most of the Queen's staff I think they're probably still in shock because they were expecting her to come back from Balmoral and just to welcome her back to Windsor Castle so there will be a lot of changes and I think as we're all getting used to like the changeover from the Queen to the now King and his kind of slimmed down vision of the monarchy I think it will take a while for all of us to get our head around what's yeah. going on let alone these ways. And I think it'll be very interesting to see the public reaction to this story because I, I have a feeling that he'll be damned if he doesn't, damned if he doesn't. Because Definitely. you've always got people saying, you know, why are we paying for the monarchy in this country? Mm -hmm. And then when he tries to slim it down, they say, oh, it's also terrible? a problem. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I think a lot of people would like to see a slim down monarchy in the form of less Prince Andrew and maybe less Prince Harry, but that's a... I, I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a hobby horse to me there. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that's, that's just my take. Chris, um, really interesting story in The Guardian here. Um, Guardian, I'm talking about what to do with your spare room. Now, I thought The Guardian would like to give their spare room to refugees. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently not. What's going on? Well, no, so, uh, there is a company called Spare Rooms, and they've, they've reported that they've had a 30% increase in visitors to their site over Monday to Friday. And it's listed the idea is in this current climate is it a good idea for for people homeowners to rent out their spare room now people, people have always had lodgers but it's coming back into to, to vogue again but the challenge is that there are a couple of you know if you compare and contrast the costs and the benefit i mean for me the biggest uh, loss will be your privacy. Yeah. The idea that you know you go past a corridor in your gym jams <laughs> and you've got your <laughs> lodger, lodger walk past the other way. So that that would be a massive loss for me. But they are saying you can sweat your asset. The fact is you can make a little bit of money from you, from the room. Uh, but then the other side of that is you lose your single occupancy. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's a 25% loss yeah. with councils, you know. Yeah. And Except you make it up in, in the money that you get from the rent, surely. Well, yeah, you do make it, you, you do make it up, but then you, but you've, you've, you've lost, you've lost 
and then you've got the, the wear and tear. Yeah. You've got somebody else, you, there's wear and tear. You've got the cost of the energy. Mm. The uses, the lights have been, been on. Yeah. So you've got to fact, you've got to factor that in. Uh, but then on the other side, you've got somebody to do babysitting if you're a single mother, <laughs> or your dog sitting. Yeah. You know, if you if you if you're a country gent, you've got the extra security. Um, I live on my own, and I fell down the stairs about three or four years ago. I fell down the stairs, bam, 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 bam oh. and I landed the front. Of, and that's the first time I realised, actually, yeah, you're quite... Right? You, you, yeah. You're lonely. Yeah. You know, I didn't, you know, if I bang my head, it might have helped me out, actually, but if, if, you, if you bang your head, and your daughter comes in three or four days later and the old man's not looking too good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, swings and roundabouts. See, there, there were swings and roundabouts, okay. but it is worth considering. Well, there's an interesting point as well. Um, um, there's been a record number of Airbnb inquiries where people are mm -hmm. renting out a single room within their own properties, not just renting the whole property. Mm -hmm. And it's actually was being put down as an indicator of recession. Yes, yeah. so are people are people looking for this extra money wherever it's they cheap. can mm -hmm. to offset the cost yeah. of living rise, to offset the mortgage, to offset the fuel prices, and all and that. And also, it's probably a, a little bit less expensive than actually going into an apartment yeah. flat, yeah. even if you're sharing with other and people. So again, it, it's got a cost of living benefit for yeah. some people. Yeah. And for the person that's, that's actually doing it this way, you you don't run the risk of people squatting in your house. It's, no. it's easier to get people out when they are. Um, you know, room to let, yeah. as opposed to a tenancy agreement, which is much, much harder, yeah. especially through COVID, there were real extra restrictions, yeah. restrictions put on. So there's between some round of us. I think people will be forced into doing this, though, but as you said, yeah. the cost will be the privacy, because it's just getting to that time with all the soaring energy bills, people are, desperate, desperate times are going to have to call for desperate measures, and yeah. Yeah. that means giving up some of your privacy. Talking about being desperate, yeah. I see you've got a story in the sun. Great segue. About <laughs> Mr. S Mr. Hancock, yeah. who at the moment, I think, is eating bugs and yeah, things. And really feet doing all sorts sheets. of stuff, isn't he? But anyway, Apparently, yeah. <laughs> it's, there are bids coming in that could yeah. help boost his career. Well, you know, I think at the beginning of um, everyone hearing about Matt Hancock joining I'm a Celeb, everyone thought it's doom and gloom for him, the public's going to hate him. But actually, I think he's actually done a good job of reconciling with the public by being on this show. Because initially, like we saw last week, he was in all these trials, but now people are actually seeing the more softer side to Matt Hancock, and people are feeling sorry for him actually being treated quite wrong. But I digress from the story, which is he's set to have a lucrative career in speaking, and a lot of agents at the moment are actually fighting for bids for Matt Hancock. So he's done a complete 360 from almost being one of the most hated men in politics to now mm. being a darling. Well, I, 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 I've got a problem with this, actually, yeah. um, because a lot of people think that this guy should be on trial. Mm. You know, he, he, should be, he should be facing the music for mm -hmm. what happened during the, the pandemic. We, we can't forget, with a, with a little bit of showbiz glitz, yeah and a Bush took a trial here and there that people weren't allowed to go to funerals, yep. they weren't allowed to see their loved ones, people died in misery. Hancock had his fingerprints all over that. Yep. And, and, you know, for, for this to turn into some sort of razzmatazz show, I think a lot of people have got an issue with that. What do you reckon, Chris? Well, you know, so certainly I agree with everything that you've said. Um, you know, the lockdowns were a travesty of justice as far as I was concerned. However, he has done it and he will do it. And what Steffi has said is going to happen. Yep. He's going to have a very lucrative career on the back of all the misery of the, that you've just mm. articulately outlined. He's going to have a lucrative career as a speaker because people are going to want to hear his version. Um, he's shown a softer side of, him, of, of himself as well as a, a can-do British bulldog mm. spirit. I mean, I've not watched the show. I don't yeah. watch the show. <laughs> and even he, him being on there has not got me to do it. So I, I agree with what you've said. I think you've laid it out very, very well, but I think he's done a great job and he's going to be a sought-after professional speaker, mm -hmm. earning a lot of money and developing celebrity status. I bet he won't add as much as, uh, what was it, um, oh, Boris. Boris Johnson? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. A quarter of a million plus yes. yeah, yeah. talking at one it, evening? Oh, that's nothing, that's nothing. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, I was at an event in Sweden with um, Bill Clinton. He had to go and play golf. It was half, oh, yeah. a million, half a million. Half a million, Bill Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> Martin, don't you think right. that this is most a trajectory that most yeah. politicians go through, though? They know that once their career is over, they've got this lucrative set of opportunities that yeah. awaits them. And they them. all do it. Every and prime minister will do it. And it's worth yeah. pointing out that most politicians tend to earn a lot more after politics yeah. absolutely. than they ever do during it. Which um, is but maybe, maybe that's why we're not getting the right talent and going through the door in the first place. That's it's exactly what I'm yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, you, you have all these things going on because they're not paid well enough. Yeah. You know, eighty-four thousand 
is a lot of money to the general public, but not at that level of, of, of uh, responsibility and, and the gravitas that it requires. So, yeah, maybe you ought to play your politics. Can I say that? Yeah. Our politics more? What do you think, yeah. Steph? Should, should we pay MPs more? No, I don't think they do. <laughs> they need to get paid more. I think they get so many perks of the job. It's and to be honest, it's some, yeah, they do. It's We've seen so many scandals in the past. Yeah. And it's more about, as you're saying, it's getting the right talent for the job. The more people who are more passionate about making a change and actually ushering those and they changes will do it through. Regardless of the it's money, like because footballers they want to do it. Who get paid ridiculous amount of money and can't score goals. <laughs> yeah. Don't go there. Don't go there. Very quickly, Steph. You've got a lovely um, story about um, those Paddington bears that were put yeah. in the parks after the Queen's death. They bears. are also making their final journey too. Yes. But at the moment, they are living it up in the Buckingham <laughs> Palace and all different royal um, houses at the moment. So at the moment, they've been taken from all the parks and the gates and they've been washed. And right now, they're all in the like Buckingham Palace and before they go to Bernardo's charity at the moment. So it's been lovely to see how their journey has been going. Yes, and to see all those lovely Paddington bears that were, were yeah. put in the parks was was oh, really so poignant. The I Queen, thought. the Queen Consort, is going to be handing them out next yeah. Thursday in a yeah. special Paddington it's bear a lovely, themed picnic. Yeah. It's a it's a lovely way for them to to actually then go on and have another life, yeah. as it were. <laughs> yes. Well, in, thanks very much indeed. Thank both you. Of you. See you again. Now,